Um, I mean, so today I was just going to talk a little bit about these, what are, they're called like the, the th three unwholesome roots. And I know that Jenny and I've brought them up before, greed, hatred, and delusion. <laughs> and when we stop like this, so let's kind of start to prepare to stop and practice that we just spend some time reflecting on this, you know, in a very spacious, compassionate way. Okay, so let's just start by grounding. Why don't you go ahead and find your meditation seat today? A position where you are, you know, going to be able to best experience um, being relaxed and yet having good energy and presence. Maybe a couple deep breaths or closing your eyes and I'm going to mute everyone now. My, possibly those deeper breaths, they might feel kind of necessary or good to help you put everything down. And as you take in this, the sound of the bell, is calling you into the cave of the heart. This kind of withdrawing from the world and into your body, even, you know, imagining the space at the heart. But as you give yourself time to do this, like, just notice what you feel like today. It's like you're asking yourself, so, how are you doing, honey? And when we feel grounded, this is like, it's almost like time goes away. And we got time here to dig deep. to be with yourself in not such a superficial way. So letting the body ground the feeling of just whatever burden is weighing on you, just letting, just putting that down. You might notice things like the, the mind is fragmented, kind of all over the place. Like, oh, okay, yep, that's normal. So, just going to keep practicing and putting it down.
or you might notice like, yeah, there's other stuff you could be doing with this time, getting stuff done, but there's the wisdom it really does help skillful to stop. There's still the flowing kind of, ah, oh, the breath is moving, the heart is beating. Oh, you can feel aliveness. You kind of come to life. That Wow, I can overlook this miracle that <clears throat> breathing and really that you have the mental health that brought you here. in your own way exploring the the relaxed calming quality and how it takes time to settle but we don't you know end up in this puddle on the floor so there's energy there's this alertness like we're here to learn be interested in how as they say the how I can cease to be the cause of my own suffering How could I do that? Now inside of the body, a feeling of space. Could you cultivate with that deep sensitivity? And feeling the space around the heart. Skin, feel your skin is soft, relaxed. Where is the strength here? It's really kind of deep in the body that I mean, they use the word core, core strength.
Notice how you keep like planting these seeds, how it's that little by little, the feeling of settling. I really kind of love the image of a snow globe, you know, that you get, it shakes up. And that it, all the little glitter pieces in there just slowly settling. Is this, yeah, it's kind of a, oh, right, things take time. Possibly noticing kind of the, uh, any hmm, kind of imbalance. Like, do you feel restless today? Uh, like the snow globe keeps, keeps getting agitated. Or, you know, you might feel really sleepy and like, uh, the brain is not interested at all. So we, we do study like how to come to balance and how we put forth energy or effort. How you can calm yourself or how you can brighten your interest really important to learn. Just, I think as we, so this can be a big topic of looking at these um, three unskillful roots of greed, 
hatred and delusion. <clears throat> so just to describe how these can feel and, um, you know, just the sense of any form of just greed or wanting something and how it can lead to tension and stress. Um, It can lead to wars in the world, (laughs) right? Um, And then what is called, so greed is any kind of um, attraction, wanting, And then um, what is usually called hatred or anger is the feeling of aversion. Like, I don't like that person. You know, it's like you're averse. You can just feel it in your body. Um, I don't like that I have to deal with this, you know, or... um, I don't, you know, even, you know, whatever is happening, like, for you after the election, like, how can the world be, you know, we can just have this aversion, like, what is going on with humans, you know? Um, And then delusion is some kind of just not seeing things clearly. This can even be, like, I'm just going to ignore things. That'll be just my solution is I'm not even in the realm of, um, you know, kind of connecting or I'm just going to do whatever I want. And so I thought I'd focus a little bit on um, anger on feeling anger or any kind of hatred and um, just sharing a little bit the story of um, I mean this is kind of a reader's digest (laughs) story of the work of um, Mahatma Gandhi So I think you might be familiar a little bit. So his whole kind of, um, he called it his um, satyagraha. So satya means um, truth and graha means to hold on. So the truth that he held on to was nonviolence, non-harming, nonviolence. So that would be the opposite of any hatred or anger. Um, So he was into, you know, doing no harm whatsoever. So his whole mission was that, was getting, you know, others to practice this, was to see this truth well, you know, I mean, the kind of the question, is this a universal truth? Is this like non-harming is the way? And so he was um, kind of was preaching this and people were like, yeah, this is, you know, the, the way, um, you know, instead of picking up guns, to go into battle. It's like we can actually kind of win through nonviolence. And he went so far as to go on hunger strikes. Now you might be familiar with this. And when he went on like his, well, the first hunger strike, um, it worked. And people put their guns down. And um, I mean, pretty dramatic way to get people to see things your way of we got to do this nonviolence. 
and um, eventually, I mean, just kind of what happened is violence erupted again. So what did he do? He went on a hunger strike again. So he ended up, I think his last hunger strike that he almost died. And it was like right at the end where finally they told him, people put their guns down. It's, um, you know, there's nonviolence right now. And so he came out of his, um, his fast. So, but there he noticed, he's like, I can't do this anymore. I can't like almost die for people to understand nonviolence. And he then reshaped his whole practice, which was clearly he had a personal truth about nonviolence. And I just remember there's some quotes that he said, he switched where he said, if you don't have nonviolence in your heart, then don't practice it. So I just am like, wow, this is very interesting. And this is what we come here to the stillness to notice, well, what is in your heart that is speaking to you? And, and can we then abide by what we're our, our own values, in a way, our own personal truths. And I know it's like we're kind of playing with this. It's like there might be things that you believe that are like, well, this really should be a universal truth. Everyone should agree with this. I can't believe they're not. So all we can really do and this gets a little tricky because other people will feel, will have different truths. Can we live with in this world and be at ease with that and continue to live according to our deepest truth? So I know, kind of big lesson. kind of this understanding of um, letting go of anger. So from there forward, it's not like Gandhi was like, well, I'm still going to be mad about you people who don't agree with me. It's like he got to another level of deeper and deeper understanding. This is how the world is. I'm, I'm not, <laughs> you know, some, I, I'm not a god or I'm not able to control everyone, nor should we be able to, right? Can we be at peace with this? So I know the mind is going to want to wrestle with this a little bit. But can we <laughs> take some time and, I mean, really, because Gandhi kind of got to this point through his own practice of moving kind of deeper into the cave of the heart. Can I hold on to what? I believe to be true, but I don't need every other being to be like me. So sitting or finding your meditative seat and then just taking in sound of the bell.
So there's a reason why we put down the urge to ponder other people. We see what this leads to. How can I create harmony? How can I stay focused on my own words and actions? I need to be able to feel, what does it feel like to take care of this body and see how that matters, this being at peace with your own body. You're making all of these decisions all day, how to take care of your body. Could we start there, knowing peace? In this moment, this moment of doing no harm, what does it feel like? It's a sense as you're hanging out in the cave of the heart. A loving quality. wordless, loving quality. The snow globe still settling. Really simple experience of, yeah, it matters to just feel grounded and settled. It matters to have a feeling of space. Space. 
space that allows I'm going to do what I feel like leads to the decrease of suffering for myself and all beings. Others might not do this, but I can be at peace with that too. They might have a different sense of what leads to a decrease of tension. This heart space is immeasurable. Can allow others to be different. Feel, keep feeling the whole body grounded, cultivate a spacious quality.
finally, you might notice that meditation is quite a physical experience. If we say the word meditation, it's like, oh, the mind is meditating. But what does meditation feel like? We This is hard to teach. But to learn by practicing in the body, the body feels like the training. So I hope there was something today that you can take with you and think of it like we're kind of taking these little threads that we get and we weave them together and, you know, just understanding this, uh, the nature of the mind and the heart and may we continue. So, 